Welcome back to the second part of this tutorial series on how to make physical hands in VR. In last video, we learned how to set up hands that push and collide realistically with our environment. And in this video, I will show you how to better improve the physical interaction, how to show the non-physical hands, and finally, how to still be able to grab object with this setup. As always, don't forget to subscribe to not miss the next video. An extra episode about physics using hand tracking will be available on my Patreon where you will be able to find the source code of this project as well. So if you want to support the channel and get access to exclusive content, join us, link in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, so first thing first, I want to show you how to display the non-physical hands when they reach a certain distance from the physical hands. Okay, so we can select the two non-physical ends that we added at the beginning of last video, and I'm going to re-enable them again. And it's here down below where we will control the appearance of the end using its renderer. Now let's go back to our end present physics script. We can add at the top here a public renderer variable called non physical hand and a public float call show non-physical hand distance that we can set at 5 cm so 0 0.05 and in the update function we can compare the distance between our hand and the physical hand with float distance equal vector 3 dot distance transform position and target dot position. If this distance now exceed our threshold, which is show non-physical hand distance, we can enable the hand renderer with non-physical hand dot enable equals true. Otherwise, we can hide them with the opposite, so non-physical hand dot enable equal false. And there you go, it's as simple as that. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity. Don't forget now to assign the corresponding end in the component, so the right hand renderer for the right hand present physics script, and same goes for the left hand renderers on the left hand presents physics script, just like that. And now let's test our game. Okay, so right now the non-physical hands are showing, but we cannot see them well because they are under the table. We need to find a trick to always display the hands in front of any object in our scene. Thankfully, with the universal render pipeline, it's possible to do so without writing a single line of code. So let me show you how. First, we can go to our layer, click on add new layer and create a non-physics and layer. Now let's go back, select both our non-physical hand and assign them this new layer and on their children as well. Next, we can search for forward renderer in the project windows. And this is where we will be able to override the rendering of our non-physical hands. So below, I'm going to click on add renderer feature render object and now if we select our non-physics and layer and that I override the depth and set its depth to test greater this will always show the end in front of everything and as we can see we can already see in our scene windows this seems to work now if you want uh, more detail about the renderer features i will leave an excellent video made by brackies on that subject and if you are not using urp but the standard pipeline you can actually achieve that effect by changing the z test in any shader but don't worry i will post in the description a link to download some standard pipeline shader already made for this that you will be able to use right away and now if we click on play tada as you can see when we collide our hands to the table our real hands are showing and that even on top of all objects in our scene so that's really neat okay so the next thing that i want to talk about is the rigid body of our physical hands so if we select both our hands and have a look at its component by default the collision detection of these hands are set to discrete which can lead to some problem when the hands are moving too fast so if you want to make sure that they are always colliding with any object and won't get passed through any, you can set them to continuous dynamic. 
Okay, secondly, our rigid body mass is currently at 1, and this is an important setting because it means that when pushing an object, this value will be taken into account and make the hands harder to move when pushing heavy objects that have a bigger mass than them. So for that reason, I like to set the mass of the hand to something like 100 to improve the interaction. Now, don't hesitate to play with this setting on other physical objects in your seal as well till you get the desired physical response. You can see here the difference it gives me with a cube of 1 kilogram and 1000. Okay, now the second parameter that I want to talk about is the physics material of the hand. Now, physics material defines the friction and the bounciness when two objects collide. So, for example, if I were to go right click, create physics material and call this uh, new physics material bouncy, and as you can see, if I set the bounciness to 1, assign this material on the collider of our sphere and drop the ball on the table, as you can see, it bounces. Now, we might want that for the ball, but for N, we don't want any bounciness. So, for this reason, we can create another physics material. And this time, I think I'm going to rename it Hand Physics Material. And before taking its value, I'm going to assign it to the collider on our end, so we can get to the left end collider prefab under our left end and click on that little arrow icon. Now we are entering the prefab editing tool and we will be able here to edit all of the capsule collider that we have our hand and I'm simply going to search for any collider on that prefab here at the top and if we select everything but the first object, as you can see, we are now selecting all of the collider of our hands and we can drag the physics material on the collider. Perfect. Now let's go back to our scene by clicking here. And what's left for us to do is to repeat the same but for the right hand collider prefab. Okay, back to the setting of our material. As we saw, we can set the bounce combined to minimum and make sure the bounciness is set to zero to have no bounciness at all for our hand. Now, for the friction, this is a bit trickier. If we increase the friction, it gets easier to pick up object with our hands, but when we collide with the table and go left and right, our hands does this weird behavior which does not happen if we set the friction to minimum. As such, this setting really depends on what you want to achieve in your game. Personally, I will leave the friction to minimum for a more natural interaction, but don't forget that you can actually use physics material on the object himself so that if you want to slide on the table but have a full friction with this cube, you can simply assign different physics material on their collider. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show you is in my opinion really important. Now, even if this setup is really great to push and interact with object, at this state it doesn't allow us to grab object naturally with the press of a button. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to the XR origin and then I select both our right hand controller and left hand controller, I'm going to add an XR direct interactor. Then we need to add a sphere collider and we can set its range to a 0. 15 and we can also set is trigger to true. Now with this we will be able to grab object with a XR direct interactable script when we press on our grid button. So let's test this by selecting both our sphere and cube and adding an XR direct interactable component to them. Now if we click on play as you can see, we can grab these objects, but they collide with the physical ends, and it's even worse when we release the object. To fix this, I'm going to disable the collider of our hands when holding an object and re-enable it afterwards. So let's go to our end present physics script. We can add at the top a private array of collider called hand colliders. Now we can get all of the colliders at the start of the game with Hen colliders equals get components in children collider. And this will find all of the collider on the children of the hands. Now that we have all of the colliders, I'm going to create two new functions. Enable hen collider and disable hen collider. For enabling all hand collider, we can do for each var item in hand colliders and enable each item with item.enable equals true. Easy, right? 
Now we can simply copy and paste everything to the disable function, but this time we can set them to false. And there you go, everything seems to be ready. Now that we can enable and disable the collider of our hand, what we need to do is call this function when interacting with an object. So if we go back to Unity, we can select the left hand controller. And as you can see, we can actually do this with here the interactor event. If we click on the plus button on the select enter, we can drag here the end presence physics of the left hand and select now off disable collider function. And when we exit the interaction in select exited, we can re-enable the collider, so let's do the same as before and select here the enable collider function. Perfect, now you already know the drill. What's left for us to do is to do exactly the same, but this time for the right hand. Okay, now that everything is set up, let's click on play to try our game. And as you can see, we did a great job. We can grab object now without having an issue with our physical hand. But we have still an issue when we release the object. The object still collide in the first frame with the physical hands. And so to fix this, an easy solution is to add some delay on the re-enabling of the collider. And let's see how we can do this by opening our script. So now I'm going to add a new function called enable collider delay. This function will take as a parameter a fluid value called delay. And using this variable, we can actually invoke the all enable collider function simply with invoke the name of our function, so enable collider, and the delay parameter, which is the time in seconds that we will wait. Perfect. So that's as simple as this. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity. What's left for us to do is to go to the hand controller and change the enable collider function to the enable collider delay function. And as you can see, we can now select the delay we want for our hand. So in my case, I think I will set it to 0 0.5 seconds. This should allow enough time for the hands to not collide with the object. Finally, after doing the same before the right hand, now let's click on play and try our game. And there it is guys, we managed to still be able to grab object with a physical hand. And when we release it, everything still worked as normal, that's perfect. Along with the different settings we used to improve the physical interaction, I think we are really on a good track with our physics interaction and I hope that this gives you guys plenty of ideas for your own project. Now sadly, this is unfortunately the end of the tutorial. I hope that you had fun following along and learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe and like this video, it really helps to promote the channel and the source code is available on my Patreon as well as this exclusive tutorial on physical hand tracking. So if you don't want to miss out on that content, join us, link in the description below. Now thank you for watching, if you guys have any subject you want to see me cover next, let me know in the comment section below.